Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel, Two Brothers Outdoors Homestead Edition. Alright guys, um, Tim won't be joining us today. Tim is in court, fulfilling his civic duty as a juror. So I guess that's something we all have to do sooner or later. Alright guys, we've had a lot of questions about the log arches that we use. It keeps the logs off the ground, it keeps them dry, keeps them from getting mud in them. And I've had a lot of people ask questions about these and they basically want dimensions and they want to know how to build one. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to explain to you everything that we did right, everything we did wrong, what we learned, what we uh, changed. And basically I'm going to give you the dimensions so if you want to build one, you can do so. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start out by telling you what we did wrong. Okay guys, so the first thing we did on the very first log arch that I built, this is the very first one, this was the prototype. First thing I did wrong was, instead of running these braces from where the axles hook to the log arch up to the front on the tongue, I left these off. I just put these braces on here, both sides, and of course, where the tongue drops down here, I put this brace here. And I thought, well, that's pretty strong. We're going to be golden. First log we picked up, it seemed to do fine. We started to move forward with it. First obstacle the wheel came to that caused the problem, the log arch bent right here and just collapsed. That's why we got the, the joint right here because... I cut the pipes, got another piece of pipe, and welded the two together right here. This wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the mistake that I made just putting these braces on. So when you build your log arch, you have to put the brace from where the axle hooks to the bottom of the arch itself, all the way up to the tongue joint. If you don't put these braces on, the log arch will collapse right here. All right, second thing we did wrong is the tires. See these nice big tall tires right here? These are 16 inch tires. These are off of a uh, Ford truck, an older Ford truck with a five point with the five uh, lug rim. All right, so the first ones we put on the first tires, we used a set of lawn tractor tires. They're about this big. Um, they came off the back of a lawn tractor. They're about that wide, I figured. Well, nice wide tires like that. Low ground pressure, won't sink in the ground. Well, I was right about that. They handled really well as far as staying on top of the ground. The problem was, we live in the Adirondacks and we have a lot of rocks. And we have logs down, not logs, but you know, trees about this big around, laying here and there on the trails, they branches will fall out of trees and stuff. Well, every obstacle that little tire came to, to uh, roll over, had problems rolling over it because the tire diameter wasn't very big. So we took those tires off. I got an old set of spindles off of a uh, hay wagon and I mounted the spindles on this arch and put the taller 16 inch tires on it. Well, I'm gonna tell you what, this tire right here, this tire will almost roll over something as high as the tire itself. These tires made such a big difference, it's just like night and day. So when you build your log arch, keep that in mind and build it with a very tall tire. Now, Tim's got 14 inch tires on his, they seem to work okay. But the 16 inch tires, I think in my opinion, um, roll over higher obstacles easier than the 14 inch tires. So the taller the tire, the better off you're gonna be. The only problem that these tires present is that they are substantially heavier than the little lawn tractor tires were. But you have to give up some to gain others. All right guys, so let's move on to the next thing. When I first built these, these little handles right here for 
picking it up. Didn't put these on. I figured pick it up right here. Well, this makes it a lot more convenient for picking it up, moving it around. So when you build your log arch, go ahead and put your handle on there right about here where you don't have to bend over, but you can stand straight, pick it up, hook it up, whatever you want to do. Okie dokie. Let's move on to problem number so four. Problem number four, as you can see, my arch itself right here, this is built out of very, very heavy angle iron. This angle iron is quarter inch thick. It's three by three. It is really heavy angle iron. I figured, boy, that's going to really make a nice solid arch. Well, what happens is when the tire hits something, the angle iron actually allows the tire to twist. So I welded braces from this brace to the outside of the angle iron, and that cuts down on that, but not completely. But it's something at least I can live with. So when we built Tim's arch, we built his out of actual drive shaft. We got our hands on some drive shafts, and instead of having the taper like this, we built his straight across and down. And we use three inch drive shafts, and it seems to work a heck of a lot better. The drive shaft doesn't twist, it doesn't allow the tires to do this when you're rolling over obstacles. It's just a lot sturdier than this angle iron, believe it or not, and it's nowhere as near as heavy. So, when you go to build your arch, um, channel iron may work. I don't know, we haven't tried it with channel iron. But the drive shaft, the round pipe, definitely works better. So just keep that in mind if you decide to build one of these. Okay guys, so that was all the mistakes that we made. After we got all the mistakes straightened out, everything else seemed to work okay. So now we're gonna get into dimensions of the log arch. Now this one is a little wider than Tim's, depending on the logs you wanna carry, but I doubt you're gonna carry anything bigger than 24 inches as that's a pretty good size log. And this one right here, 34 inches between this point and this point. So I kind of built it a lot wider than it needs to be. Tim's isn't quite as wide. He has an easier time maneuvering it through the woods because the uh, axle width isn't as wide. So if I were to build another one, I would actually build it narrower than this one is right here. Keeping in mind that a 24 inch log is huge and uh, I don't see any reason to build it any wider than maybe 28 inches. But like I said, the narrower wheel width, the axle width, uh, makes it easier to maneuver through the woods. This one I got to pay attention about trees and stuff on either side of the trail because it is substantially wider. Okay, so let's get into actual dimensions. Now, the higher you are here from the ground, the higher you're going to be able to pick your log up off the ground. And that's kind of important because if you get into um, mud holes like we do, sometimes these tires will, will get into mud that's, that's this deep. But if the log is pulled up way in here, you don't get any mud on the log. The log stays clean. And believe me, that's what this is all about, is keeping your logs clean because the minute your saw blade hits a bit of dirt, you're done. All right, so let's start with the dimensions. Now this particular one, the frame itself is 44 inches. Now, if I were to build it straight across like we did with Tim's, we put Tim's at 36 inches. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the height is 44 inches. If I were to do it again, like we did Tim's, I would do it at three feet. So you come up to three feet, go straight across, go down three feet. Now the width of mine is 40 inches outside to outside. Inside to inside is 34 and a half inches. But like I said, this is wide 
I would drop that down to 28 inches if I were to build this again. Okay, so if you look up here, I mounted a pulley up here. This pulley is for the winch. The winch is mounted on the front of the trailer. The cable comes down this pulley, drops straight down. Now, you'll notice that on the bottom of this is a little tiny snatch block. You can buy these at Harbor Freight. That snatch block makes it a lot easier to pick up a log. You just bring the cable through the snatch block, hook it back to the log arch itself, and that doubles the weight of your winch, what it can pick up, and it makes it just makes it a lot easier with that snatch block on there. It slows it down a little bit, but that doesn't matter. Now, if we're dragging a log to the log arch, you can unhook the cable from here and just hook the cable straight out to a chain around the log and drag the log to the arch. Um, dragging a log isn't quite as bad as picking it up as far as weight's concerned. Okay, so let's get on to more of the dimensions and then we'll get into the spindles. Okay, so as you can see, I have the winch mounted here. It's just, it's just a cheap boat winch from Harbor Freight. Nothing spectacular. And it's mounted on the backbone of the log arch. All right, so the backbone of the log arch is 92 inches. And like I said, we can get a 12 foot log on this without a problem. We could go longer, letting the front of the log just sit up in here and, and jack up the back. But when you do that, the longer the log is, the more weight it takes off the tongue of the log arch. So that could present a problem if you go too far. All right, so the backbone is 92 inches. The backbone is made out of schedule 80 pipe. Um, I got the heaviest pipe that I could use for the backbone and we did the same for Tim's and that works out really well. Okay, so we went from where the axle attaches to the arch itself up to the tongue and that is a hundred inches long. But once you get this part assembled, you can measure this yourself and cut it accordingly. These pipes are just regular black iron pipe. It's, uh, I think it's one inch pipe, if I'm not wrong. The tension on this pipe isn't, isn't a uh, up and down tension, it's a pull tension. So this is plenty strong enough. Just regular black iron pipe right here is plenty strong enough. All right, so the drop on our tongue, the drop is 24 inches. Now, when you make this drop on the tongue, make sure you put a good solid brace from the bottom of the drop back to the backbone on the arch, and that'll keep this tongue from bending this way or bending this way. This just stiffens this up really nice. This is also just regular black iron pipe. The tongue itself is also black iron pipe, and the tongue is 30 inches long. And the reason this tongue is 30 inches long is so when I hook it to the four-wheeler, or I hook it to the back of the tractor, I can make a sharp turn. I can almost make a turn that's an angle like this because it misses the four-wheeler, it also misses the tires on the tractor. So it's a good thing to make this tongue a little longer than what you think you might need. You can always shorten it later if you have to. Okay, so on the tongue, I added this brace right here and welded this on. This keeps these from spreading. Sometimes when you pull a log up in here, it sits kind of tight. And I didn't want these to spread to break these pipes loose up here. And as you can see, we've done multiple welds up here because we have had problems. So this brace right here, up close, um, keeps these from spreading and that really works well. Okay, our tongue is just a simple uh, 5 8 hole drilled through a piece of flat bar and that sits on a uh, bolt type hitch on the back of the four-wheeler. Also on the draw bar in the tractor, we have a bolt set up the same way. The bolt comes up through here. You can either put a nut on it or 
we put a washer and drilled a hole through the bolt and just put a pin through it. But that keeps it from coming loose. Of course, the winch is just held on with U-bolts. Pretty straightforward and simple. Okay. So I welded this bolt here, and this is for hooking the chain. What this chain does is when it goes around the log, goes around the log, the chain is welded to the backbone on this side. The chain goes around the log, you pick the chain up, and you slide on this bolt, and what that does is it supports the front of the log. When you load a log on the arch, you want the front of the log to be a little heavier so it wants to fall, and that's what this chain does, is it supports it up against the backbone, and by being heavy forward, the log rides against the chain. Okay, so you'll notice there's two hooks, one here and one here welded on the back of the log arch. This is the chain that goes around the log that the snatch block hooks to and it jacks it up. These hooks serve two purposes. Number one, carries this chain. Number two, I have an extra piece of chain in the back of the four-wheeler. So I'm really carrying a heavy log. What I'll do is I'll bring the log up till it start till we stop. And then I'll take the chain in the back of the four-wheeler. I'll wrap it around these hooks, around the log, and hook it back into itself over here. And then I can let the cable down a little bit. And this chain supports the log. So when you're hitting bumps and stuff, it's not putting a lot of strain on this cable. Smaller logs, no problem. But boy, we've pulled out, I pulled out some 30-inch logs. And they are so heavy that it actually hit a bump, you break this cable. So that safety chain around the log takes the pressure off the cable so it doesn't break the cable. Because a breaking cable is a pain in the neck. Now I said in the beginning of the video, these brackets were the first ones we put on there. They're not necessary. Don't worry about those brackets. We don't have them on Tim's. And uh, they don't do anything right now, they're just there. Okay, so we'll get down to the spindles. Now you notice the spindles are not welded to the angle iron. I welded the spindles to a separate piece of metal. You can see right here, it's an old hay, hay wagon spindle, but you can get these spindles off the back uh, of front wheel drive cars out of the junkyard and stuff. You can get spindles just about anywhere. It's just make sure you get the hub and a rim. Okay, so the reason I bolted this to the uh, frame of the log arch is so that I can adjust the toe by adding or subtracting washers from this forward bolt. And that helps me uh, get the toe in line so that when you're pulling the log arch down the road, the hard road, the toe is very important to keep from wiping your tires out. So basically, the only reason I bolted this to the frame instead of welding it was so that I can adjust the toe. And you can see one of them here. Yeah, this one right here, I got washers in the back. So it moves this wheel this way. But it's just important to make sure the toe is is straight on these because if the toe isn't straight and you get it on a hard surface these tires will start shimmying like this and it's just wearing the tires out to do that which you don't have to have the greatest of tires on here but you also don't want to wear them out prematurely a view of this pulley right here it's just a simple design it's two pieces of flat bar welded with a bolt through it and a pulley in the center with a bearing in it now on tim's we run a piece of metal over the top so the cable doesn't jump out of the pulley. The little piece of metal rides right close to the pulley. So I was going to do this to this one, but I just haven't. It works until it becomes a pain in the neck. I'm not worried about it. Okay, guys. So that is the log arch in its entirety. What we did wrong, what we did right, what we've learned over the years. But I can tell you this right now. <clears throat> this is one of the most instrumental things that we have built to go along with these band mills. Our logs are clean. There's absolutely no dirt, no mud, nothing stuck in the bark. And when we drop a tree, there's so many leaves and such a thick mat of humus up there that it really doesn't hurt the log when it falls. There's no dirt involved. And once we get them off the ground with this and start bringing them out, we go through mud holes, we go over rocks. 
and these things are just instrumental in keeping the logs clean another thing we've also used them for is we have uh, bought logs from people down the road we've hooked these right behind the pickup trucks and down the road we go with a triangle on the back pick the log up bring it back home triangle on the back of the log so they work well for hauling logs down the road as well now we are building a trailer it's back here in the snow we've built a trailer that we can haul logs on we're almost done with that and that'll allow us to bring home more than one log at a time but i'll tell you these log arches have been instrumental it's one of the best things that we built and we really like using them i bought a tractor to haul logs out of the woods with this and tractor's not necessary really the the four wheelers really do a good job pulling logs out and it just doesn't seem to put a real bad strain on them all right guys so that's it for the log arch that's it for today we're hoping to get rid of some of this snow here pretty quick we're almost to april and it's not impossible to get snow in april but we're sure hoping we don't march has been a very snowy winter for us winter wasn't bad but march oh my god so once the snow is gone we'll get back under full operation we appreciate you guys coming along with us we appreciate your support and uh hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell you don't want to miss future videos don't forget about our uh our uh store we sell out two brothers outdoors apparel we got hats, we got coffee cups, we got tumblers, we got all kinds of stuff. Really nice looking stuff. Sweatshirts, t-shirts. Alright guys, so that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for joining us. Hit that thumbs up. And until next time, we'll catch you later. You know, even though we got a bunch of snow on the ground, there's nothing nicer than just sitting in the sawmill building full sun editing a video. I enjoy the warmth of the sun. Come on spring.